kids virtual worship. Let's jump right into it by having a missions moment. Check this out. Hi there. Hi. We are the Tika family. Rayuel. We're missionaries to the Philippines. And we'd like to say hello. Thank you for praying for us, loving us, we love you too, and we want to sing to you the New Testament books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, Corinthians, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians, Thessalonians, Timothy, Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, Peter, Peter, John, 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 the Revelation. And I hope you memorize it. We're having fun here in the Philippines. The Philippines is very far from the United States. And we also have a ministry to help poor kids. And Christine will tell you more about that. Hi everyone, yes, we are feeding kids about probably 200 of them every single week. So we thank you for your prayers and support and uh, we appreciate all the help that you uh, send to our church. And uh, just continue to pray for the children that we are feeding and, and teaching. Right now, because we are in quarantine, what we did was to produce uh, an online kids church. Uh, Sunday school so they just you know they borrow the cell phones of their parents and they watch and they sing with us listen to Bible stories and we make sure to feed them at least once a week yes and it's very fun to do so uh, right now we'd like to thank FBC Kids uh, Fellowship Baptist Church Pastor Dave and all the teachers keep on keeping on and all the kids we would like to say goodbye See you later. Alligator. For a while. Crocodile. See you again. Bye. Man, I've got so many things to pack. But, oh, please be careful with that, Mr. Bubble. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. See, I'm, I'm getting a brand new office. And, and I, I have to pack all my stuff up. <laughs> I'm so excited. Let me sit this down here. Oh. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, yes. And. Oh. Oh. Uh, uh. Okay, <laughs> well, I'll probably just get a cell phone anyway. Hey, 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 you probably remember my Leonard Cube. Lunar Cube, it's like the coolest cube ever. I, I, I use my Lunar Cube for many things. One of the most important things I use it for is a nightlight because I get scared at night. I get kind of scared of the dark, but I'm pretty much over that now and I'd like to give this away before I go to my new office and I think I'm gonna keep this old desk here I like it but I'd like to give one of you this and all you have to do is email me email me the most creative thing you did during quarantine time on earth that's all you gotta do either send me a video or just let me know what you've been up to I'd love to know and everybody that sends me an email is gonna get their name in a drawing for this cube right here and I'll send it to you on earth you're gonna love it and I can't wait to hear back from you and next time we get together we'll not only give this away but you'll see my brand new office it's gonna be amazing I wish I could read to you some of the emails but I already packed up my computer so we'll wait till next time we get together until then have a good day. Bye-bye. Hey there, kids. This is episode 11 of FBC Kids Virtual Worship. I'm really excited to be here with you guys because I got so many things to talk about. Yeah, 
a lot to talk about. But before we jump into anything, let's go to Professor Wise to find out what happened to that kid that was about to cross the creek. Check this out. Last time we were together, we talked about this young man here. His name's Christian. He made a decision to pass through a creek. And we told you some things that you needed to consider whether he would make it or not. We told you to consider three things. And with those three things to consider, you had to make a decision whether this young man would pass or crash. Well, Professor Wise here wants to find out if you made the right choice. So, yeah, watch this and you'll better understand what truly happened to this young man. If he fails. <laughs> there you have it folks bad decision no wisdom and if you said that he passed you have very little wisdom too because he crashed that's right thank you professor wisdom signing on last time we were together we were in first kings and we were studying the subject of wisdom. It was our key word, wisdom. If you don't remember, God gave Solomon wisdom. It was the one request Solomon had, and God granted him that. Later on, we find out that Solomon not only got wisdom, but he gave wisdom to who? His people and his son. And that's what we talked about, how Solomon invested in his people and his own son and gave them wisdom. We learned that wisdom just means using godly judgment, having a clarity and understanding that what God says is what matters most, not what we think or what we believe, but what we know God's word tells us to do and obeying it. We also realized that wisdom, godly wisdom, meant that you were going to honor God. The word fear is used in the Bible. The beginning of wisdom comes with fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And fear just simply means honor God. And when you do, you'll have wisdom. Now today, the key word is temple. And I'm standing in front of a temple. Now we're not talking about any temple. We're talking about Solomon's temple today. Now there's a lot of temples in the world. Like for instance, right here in Columbus, Ohio, this temple is in the middle of Columbus. Crazy stuff, huh? There's different temples all over the place. But the word temple needs to have a clear understanding. The word temple just means this. It means a dwelling place for God or gods. It is also a place of worship. Now, the difference between Solomon's temple, the temple that Solomon built in 1 Kings chapter 8, and the temples that we see like this one behind me, is this. God dwelt in the temple that Solomon built. It was in Jerusalem. Now these other temples are made for many gods. But we know according to the Bible there's only one true God. And that is Almighty God. The same God that Solomon and the children of Israel worshipped. And so when we look in 1 Kings chapter 8, we learn that Solomon got the priests together and they brought what was called the Ark of the Covenant. Pretty intense stuff. The Ark of the Covenant was this really special box that had these angels on top and their wings pointed into each other and there was the presence of God. Now, they took that and brought it to the temple and the temple was beautiful and it took a long long time to build this beautiful temple well to better understand this temple that solomon built and to really understand how important it was because it represents the presence of god at the time of solomon which is over 2000 years ago i want you to check out this video by shared faith it's an awesome opportunity for you to have a better understanding of what Solomon had to do in order to get the Ark of the Covenant to the temple and what that temple looked like. So look at this for just a minute. In King David's time, the Ark of the Covenant, which was a great golden chest that held the Ten Commandments, 
and represented God's presence among the Israelites, had been held captive by the Philistines. King David gathered all his soldiers and all the people of Israel to rescue the Ark of the Covenant from enemy hands. As they returned to Jerusalem, the great crowd of people danced with joy and sang songs of praise to God. Years after bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem, God gave King David peace from all his enemies. In awe of all the Lord had done for him, King David decided to build the Lord a temple. But because King David had been a man of war, God came to the prophet Nathan and told him that King David would not be the one to build this amazing temple. Instead, God said that King David's son Solomon would build him a temple and that God would set up an eternal dynasty through the lineage of King David. As King David came to the end of his life, he made preparations for Solomon to build the temple. King David had great ships bring logs of cedar wood from foreign lands, and he had tons of stone carved from distant mountains brought to Jerusalem. He ordered iron and more bronze than could be weighed to make nails and other fittings for the great temple. King David gathered the leaders of Israel together and told them to support Solomon so he would be successful in this great task. For more than seven years, Solomon embarked upon the great work of building the temple. When it was finished, it stood four stories tall and 90 feet long. The interior of the building was completely covered in cedar wood, decorated with beautiful carvings of fruit and open flowers. The walls of the inner sanctuary, the room where the Ark of the Covenant was housed, were covered in pure gold. Not a single surface of the temple was without decoration. It was a magnificent sight. When the temple was finished, Solomon completed his father's vision and had the Ark of the Covenant brought into the temple. As Solomon and the elders of Israel watched, a procession of priests carried the Ark into the temple. Once it had been placed upon the altar in the inner sanctuary, a great cloud appeared as the glory of the Lord filled the temple. The cloud was so thick, the priests could not perform their work. The entire assembly of Israel had gathered for the occasion. After seeing the glory of the Lord fill the temple, Solomon prayed to God, praising his glory and faithfulness. Solomon prayed that God's people would live according to God's word and purposes. Once Solomon had finished praying and blessing all those in attendance, the people celebrated the incredible feat that had been accomplished. The temple had been built, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Once the temple construction was completed, the Lord appeared to Solomon. The Lord said, I have made this temple you built holy by putting my name on it forever. God told Solomon that if he followed him faithfully, as his father David had, his royal line would have no end. God challenged Solomon, as he instructs us all, to follow him faithfully. So we're in the city of Bexley. Bexley is one of the largest communities in this, this side of Ohio of Jewish people. And they still practice some of the Jewish laws. It's pretty interesting. During the time of Solomon, as you just saw, they had some very important traditions they held to. More than important than just tradition, they did it because God asked them to. One of those things they would do is worship by sacrifice. That's right, that's why they had the temple. And like I said before, there's a many, many, many temples across the world, but the temple of Solomon was unique because it was set aside and built for God the true and living God. 
And they started, as you saw in that video, with the Ark of the Covenant, bringing it to the temple. To, to, uh, it required the priest to be a part of it. It required Solomon to orchestrate all the necessary movements and everything that was important to make it happen. He put in place. How did he know how to do this? Because he was the wisest man that ever lived. That's how he knew. God gave him wisdom. And God blessed him with the knowledge of how to build the temple and how to establish what was called the Holy of Holies. Now the Holy of Holies was at the back of the temple. That is where the Ark of the Covenant, which meant the presence of God was located. Really, really special because only the priest could go there. Now, listen to this. In 1 Kings chapter eight, the Bible explains to us that Solomon brought the Ark, which was the presence of God, to the temple. The temple was the place, by the way, that's our key word, temple. The temple was the place where the people would come to worship, and it was also the location where the true and living God dwelt. It was the presence of God, which is referred to as the Shekinah glory. That's a pretty deep way of saying it. But the people of Israel, Jerusalem, they would come once a year for a large sacrifice, a big sacrifice, a major sacrificial day. And on that day, the priest would go into what was called the Holy of Holies, where there was this big veil, which just means a huge curtain would separate the people from God's presence. And he would open that curtain and he'd go in, the priest, and he would make a sacrifice and present to God the blood of a lamb, hence sacrifice, for the forgiveness of the people's sins. Now we don't do that anymore. The reason why is 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for us. He was the final sacrifice, so there would never be another sacrifice made again. Jesus died for every man, woman, and child, and all they have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that Jesus is the true living God and there is no other God. Just like Solomon believed, the temple was made for the true living God. One God, and we believe in that true living God, the Jehovah God and we put our faith and trust in him. And because of that, because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, how he died for our sins and he rose again, and because he's the true and living God, we can have him come live in our lives, in our body, because it's the Holy Spirit. And when you become a Christian, God comes to live in you, and he stays with you, and he helps you, and he leads you, and he, and he gives you wisdom of what not to do and what to do. Because your body, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, is the temple of God. We don't have a building that's a temple anymore where God dwells. We now are the temple. That doesn't mean your body is a building. It just means your body holds the very presence of God, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is this sweet little voice that speaks to you and lets you know, don't do that. That's not right. You need to do what's right. He speaks to us and he guides us and he leads us. And the more we listen to him, the more we obey him, the wiser we become because we're honoring God, which the Bible uses the word fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And because no longer is there a need for a temple, a building, because now we are the temple. See, in the time of Solomon, there was a need for the temple where the people would come once a year to worship and sacrifice. And that's where the presence of God was. Now, because Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago, we are the temple and Jesus lives in us. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. And because of that, he will never leave us or forsake us. We don't have to go to a building any longer to meet with God. We don't have to have a high priest go behind a veil, a big curtain to meet with God to, to, to get our sins forgiven. All we have to do is ask. Because the Bible says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We now have the ability to go straight to God and ask for forgiveness. And we no longer have to go to the temple because God lives in us. Just like the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. So, remember, key word today is the temple. First there was Solomon's temple, and now there's our temple. And our temple holds the Holy Spirit. And he'll never leave us or forsake us. And because of that, we can always know he's with us. And we don't have to fear or worry. 
Isn't that crazy to think that God is with us everywhere we go if you're a Christian? So don't forget, today's all about the temple. You are the temple of God. Be sure to live in such a way that other people see Jesus in you. Now, let's take a moment because it's time for some new games because it's summertime and we're gonna do boys versus girls summer edition right now, it's all outside. All right, it's boys versus girls, but we're doing this, the summer edition, because it's summertime, we're outside. We're with Chris Andrews over here, his lovely wife, Trisha here, and my lovely wife, Brianna, which surprisingly, she decided she would join us today. She's not into these kind of games, but she's got a great spirit. We're gonna have fun. We're right here at Chris's house. Chris, you ready to do this? I'm ready. All right, let me explain this game. This is Can Jam. You got two of these, but consider the can, you got a Frisbee. It will be me and Chris versus Brianna and Trisha. Get a Frisbee. They throw the Frisbee at the can. If the Frisbee goes through the hole. Oh! Yeah, you would win. What's the chances of that? I feel really good right now. All right, anyway. So, if you, if you take the Frisbee and throw it, and your teammate, Hits it and hits the can, that's two points. If your teammate, you throw it, hits it, nails it in the can, that is three points. You understand? Did I make that? Did that make right? I guess that's right. All right. It's an automatic win if you go in the slot. If I throw it and I hit it, uh, it is two points. If I throw it, and knock it in, it's three points. All right, is that right? If, if these directions are wrong, you know what? Look it up. Do it your own way. We're gonna have fun. So, Chris, you're on that side. Brianna or Trisha, you're on this side. Okay, go only to 10 today, 10, 10. Let's get into this game. Are you ready? Ready, let's do it. It's a beautiful day, it's gonna happen. We're the winners today, for sure. Today. I feel it, I feel it in the no. air. Nothing, zero. All right, Chris's turn. Oh, it's my turn. Yeah, you throw back. All right. Okay, Jim. Bam. Oh. Off the top. That's one point. Skinned off the top. Good thing, because I wasn't paying attention. Zero. Stop. Trisha's going to do it. Right okay. through. You have to help. Right through, Trisha. That's a point. That's a point. That's a point. You need to go higher. Oh, that was so close. Oh, Is that two po That's two points, right? You hit it, it's two points. Oh! oh. It's your turn. I just want to. Okay, well. So close! Chris, what do we have? A lot okay. of points. <laughs> oh, sorry. I don't have a point. Nice catch. I don't know if you can score. Big world. Three. What? He hit it, I hit it. That's three points. It's three. Two, four. And then she hit it. Four to two. Four to two. Four to two. Four being us. Four, five, six. 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 Come on, Chris. Make us proud. Seven, eight. Seven, eight. Eight. Eight to what? Two? Oh! Eight to four. 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 Eight in. four. Eight to four. Eight to four. Eight to six. Eight to six. What are we playing to? Ten. Ten. Okay. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna bring it home right now. Oh! That's, uh, that's, that's actually ten. ten. But what we'll do is we're gonna give you a chance. We'll go to twelve. Okay. We're gonna get twelve right. A final, a final thing where anybody can make it through, then it's an automatic. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We can yeah. do that. Kind of like a double or nothing. So final you want? Elimination. Okay. Fine. Okay. Ready? Okay. Go ahead. Close. Trisha's gonna do it. Okay. We'll, we'll even lift it up for you. Oh, don't. She we'll doesn't even. need your. Wait, your scoot it forward. Don't be over. Don't. Okay, I good enough? She can do it. I can do it. What's that? Yeah. She can't. Oh, way off. Whoops. Woo! That was almost embarrassing for all of us. All right, that's it. We got 10. 
You got what, four? No. Three? Two. We eight. eight. All right. We won by one eight. We, we eight. won. It doesn't matter how much we won by. We it's won. because they started first. Ladies, eight. Guys, ten. Ladies, losers. Guys, winners. Champs. Oh. Right there. That's it. All right. Oh, oh come on, man. Hey kids, this is Jean. I'm one of your Sunday school teachers at FBC Kids. We miss you guys and can't wait to get back with you. But until then, keep watching the episodes. Have an awesome summer and we will see you soon. I think that was worse than the first one. <laughs>